Hello and welcome to a tutorial for the game Matane. This is a game by Carl Chuddock and Asmadi Games for two to five players. In Matane, you're a worker in a Buddhist temple who is attending to visiting tourists. Your objective will be to complete works for display and create replicas as sales. Works you complete, sales you create and sales interest you have in your hand all count as points at the end of the game. The person with the highest points is the winner. The game is made up of a deck of cards. Each card has various functions in the game. Cards are one of five types with coloured borders. Colours signify which material you can use, tasks you can perform and a value which impacts score and gameplay. We can see here that grey cards are cloth material, tailor tasks and have a value of two. Cards are also works that have a name and an effect that comes into play once they are completed. This is described in the text below the picture. These effects give you certain abilities that break certain rules or give you specific advantages as you play. For example, scroll gives you points at the end of the game, whereas cup allows you to end the game early after following its instructions. Each card is a unique work with a unique effect. Let's have a look at the player mats and play space. Each mat has the turn structure on one side and key elements on the other. It shows you where you place tasks, assistance, materials in your workplace and sales. Tasks are your main actions in the game. Assistants aid you in your tasks by duplicating them. Workplace materials help you craft works and can also become sales which help you gain points. We will cover all this later. There is also the draw deck from which you draw cards, the floor where you place old tasks, your pickup area where you place any cards you draw from the deck and your two wings where you place completed works. Completed works in your left wing enable matching assistance to be more powerful. Completed works in your right wing allow sales of the same material to be scored as points at the end of the game. Having five works in one or other of your wings ends the game. So let's have a look at the setup, turn structure and how you play the game. This will be the setup for two players. Each player starts with a playmat in front of them. At the beginning of the game, everyone is dealt a hand of five cards. Each player then draws a card and adds it to the floor. The start player will be the one whose placed work is first alphabetically. Each other player will put a card face down under their task lot taken from the deck. Players take a complete turn and then play moves clockwise to the next player. A turn consists of a whole day in the temple in three phases, morning, noon and night. Let's jump ahead to a game in progress to see how the phases would work in practice. You start with the morning, which is the setup phase. 1. Check your hand size and discard down to 5 cards. Any discarded cards are returned to the bottom of the deck. Return is a keyword in this game and means to place a card or cards to the bottom of the deck. Some works will use this turn. 2. Discard your previous task. The task you played last turn is put onto the floor. 3. Perform in morning effects. Some works have effects that can be utilised in the morning. This is when you perform these. If you have more than one, you can choose to do them in any order. 4. Choose a new task. From your hand, place a chosen task in your slot. Tasks are the core actions of the game and how you get things done. So let's have a look at what tasks are available. The tasks available in the game are listed on the other side of the player board and are shown on the cards. Each task works as follows. The monk allows you to move cards from the floor to your assistants. Assistants allow you to take additional actions when completing tasks. The potter allows you to take a card from the floor and add it as a material to your workplace. Materials help you craft works and can become sales. The clerk allows you to move materials from your workplace to your sales area. Your sales are a way of scoring points. The tailor allows you to return as many cards as you wish to the draw deck and then draw cards up to your hand size of five. If you already have five and choose to tailor, you do not draw cards. There are other options though, which we will go over soon. When you draw cards from the deck, you always draw and place the cards face down in your pickup area. These cards are taken into your hand in the last phase of your turn. When assessing your hand size for any tailor task or action, it's comprised of the cards in your hand and those already in your pickup area. The smith allows you to complete works from your hand and place them into your wings. The work is completed by revealing matching materials from your hand as support. These are just revealed and do not get spent or discarded, they stay in your hand. The number of cards needed to support is equal to the card's value, so stone works have a value of 2, metal of 3 and so on. 
Your work counts towards this number, so you only need to reveal one other stone from your hand to build a stone works, and paper works support themselves. The completed work is put into either wing. Instead of playing a new task, you can choose not to place anything. When it comes to your task, you take a prayer action. This means you draw a card from the deck and place it face down in your pickup area. A prayer action is mandatory at any time you do not or choose not to activate a task. In fact, any action can be replaced with a prayer action. So, let's get back to the game. I choose to lay a tailor task. This ends the morning phase and moves us on to noon. This is the core of your turn. 1. Perform the task of your opponents. Going clockwise around the table, you perform the task in each of your opponent's slots. You do each task in turn, followed by any associated actions you gain from assistance. If they don't have a task because they chose to prayer, then you move on to the next player. 2. Perform your task. Performing a task can consist of multiple actions. The task itself is one action, and any matching assistance you have adds extra actions to the task, whether performing your opponent's task or yours. Each assistant is one extra action of that type, or two if the assistant is covered by a matching work in the left wing. You total up all the actions and then take them all in a row. Here I have three tailor actions I can take. Any of these actions can be played as their matching tasks, converted to craft actions, or replaced with a prayer action, in any order you choose. So here I could tailor prayer craft, or prayer craft prayer, or craft tailor prayer, or prayer prayer prayer, or tailor tailor tailor, so on. But what is the craft action? Craft allows you to complete a work of the matching material type as the task you are converting and it uses materials from your workplace to support it. If you choose to craft with your tailor action, you can complete a cloth work if you have at least one cloth in your workplace, cloth being the matching material to the tailor task. The work still counts as one towards the value and materials are not spent. Any task or bonus action from assistance can be converted to a craft action. After performing task, you move on to night, which is the cleanup phase. One. You may perform at-night effects of your completed works in any order you choose. 2. Draw any cards in your pickup area into your hand. This ends the night phase and your turn. The next player clockwise starts their turn and goes through all three phases. The game ends immediately when the deck is exhausted or at the moment a player has built five works in one of their two wings. The phases are not continued to the end of the turn, players stop immediately and total up their score. The highest score wins. You work out your score by totalling up the value of all of your works, of any covered sales and all the cards in your hand that qualify for sales interest. So that's the basic structure of the game, but let's examine how sales, interest and cover works. Your sales will score their value in points only if they are covered. To cover sales, you need to have a matching work in the wings on the right. A work will cover a number of sales equal to its value. If there are more matching sales than a work's value, none of them are covered. It's all or nothing. Any sales not covered score zero points. Here, only the metal sales scores its three points. You will also score the value in points of any cards in your hand that qualify for sales interest. For each material type in your sales that you have more of than any other player, you score the value of any matching cards in your hand, regardless of whether the sales are covered or not. So these two paper would give you an extra two points if you were the player with the most paper in your sales. Remember, you also score the value of all completed works in both wings, left and right. Assistance can also be covered too, by having a matching work in the left wing. Covered assistants give you two actions. Cover works the same way as for sales. So if you have two smiths in your assistance and you have a metal work on your left wing, you could take four extra actions on top of any smith task you took. Again, if your assistants of one type are not all covered, none of them are. So these clerks are not covered and would only add one extra action each. One last thing about works. Their effects may be used immediately that they are completed. If a paperwork allows you to return a paperwork and build a work from the deck for free, then you can do it with that work. Effects can also trigger and be used more than once a turn if something triggers them. So finally, let's see a quick turn in action. First, I check my hand and drop it down to five cards. I put my previous task, which was a tailor, onto the floor. I check my works, one of which has an in-the-morning effect, so I can use my bowl to add a card to my workplace. And it's clay. That could be useful. Then I choose a new task. 
I'm going to place a clerk so I can start getting things into my sails to score points. It's now noon. I do my opponent's task clockwise first. My opponent has a potter action. I also have a potter action in my assistance and it's covered by my bowl. That means I have three potter actions in total. With my first, I will grab this clay from the floor and put it into my workplace. With my second, I can now craft a clay work. I have two clay in my workplace to support completing Bangle as it counts towards itself. There is nothing else I want to potter or craft, so with my final potter action, I take a prayer and draw one card to my pickup area. Then I do my task. I only have one clerk action because I don't have any assistance. I'm going to move a clay from my workplace to my sails, as I have a clay work in this wing, so at the end of the game, three clay sails will be covered and score me points. Then I move to knight. First I check for at knight effects. Pinwheel allows me to return a card to the deck and draw a card if I want. I return this one as I'm not sure how useful it will be for me, and then I draw a card. It goes to my pickup area. Lastly, I draw my cards to my hand, and that ends my turn. And that's the game. It's quite short and can be quite complex with so many options, but after about two or three plays, it really starts to flow. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game.